Hey there, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Choose the Way, where we talk about anything and everything pertaining to life. However, we always try to find the best way and choose the best way to live. Uh, this is episode seven, and we're going to be talking about an interesting topic today. And that topic is going to be uh, the fourth part of our series, The Christmas Myth. And we're going to talk about this Emmanuel, which Matthew writes, uh, referencing the prophets, Emmanuel, God with us. And we're going to talk about the myth that Jesus isn't really that unique. And there is really a, a circulating amount of people that believe that Jesus' birth and who he was uh, does not make him that unique and definitely doesn't make him God or someone worth worshiping. However, when you start to look at the scriptures, uh, you start to get a different picture. And so I wanted to talk to you about, I want to kind of put to rest the myth that Jesus really isn't that unique because there are people out there that say that there are other gods and other um, stories in history that say similar things about their gods that are similar about Jesus. For instance, even the virgin birth. There are some stories out there that try to uh, report that um, there was virgin birth involved in these certain people like Horus, um, Zoroaster, uh, the Buddha, and people try to say that yes their birth was virgin um, however uh, when you go back and you look at the history of that and you look at the actual stories of that you see that there was no miraculous virgin birth involved but greater yet I want you to take a look at this and that is just the scriptures today I just want to show you the uniqueness of who Jesus is in the scriptures and so I want to take you back all the way to the beginning in the Hebrew text of Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 26 you see here on this text that I have um, uh, kind of taken the verses and I've kind of manipulated them so I can put it on one space. Um, but if you go back and read verses 1 through 26, you'll see the entire creation story. And then when you move to the very end of that creation story, you see that God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, if you go back to there, you'll see that some scholars believe that when it says, let us make man in our image, that it's speaking of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But then you'll find other scholars who will say, well, it's very possible that God was actually speaking to his spiritual and angelic realm of creation. Uh, what some scholars have called, you can go and you can research Michael Heiser, who has done a lot of work on this uh, in his book, The Unseen Realm. Uh, but the idea is that in Psalm 82 and Deuteronomy chapter 32, that God has a council of spirit beings that he consults and talks with. Now that doesn't mean that God uh, listens to them or does what they tell him to do, but it's possible that in Genesis chapter 1 that God was speaking to that uh, spiritual council when he said, let us make man in our image. Now, even though he may have been counseling and talking with this council, it is true though, according to the scriptures, that God is the one who did the creating, not the angelic realm, but God is the one who turned then and created mankind in his image and his likeness. So if you go back to that text, you'll see here that God created everything uh, day after day. And then on the sixth day, he said, hey, let us create mankind in our image according to our likeness. Now, if you go to the New Testament then, you'll see that John writes this in John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. John says, in the beginning was the Word. Now, in, if you're reading John 1, uh, verse 1, you don't know what the Word is just yet, but we'll, we'll come to that in just a second. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So whatever the Word is, it was with God, and the Word was God. So now you can interchange Word for God, because God is the Word. It goes on to say, He was in the beginning with God. So now you have this strange, mysterious idea that the word is God, but the word is also with God. And that's where you get that kind of strange idea of the mystery of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. One essence, but three distinct persons. So he's in the beginning. All things, verse 3, all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. 
So speaking of the word here, this tells us that God, who is the word, is the one who created all things. And so if we go back to Genesis, says Genesis chapter 1, we say, okay, we don't have any problem with that. That's fine. But then if you go about down to verse 14 of John chapter 1, John writes this, And then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, or we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. So John tells us an important truth here, and that is that this word that was in the beginning, that was with God and was God, and that created all things that we see and know, that he put on flesh and became a man. That's, that's very unique, that a God, the God of all creation, would put on flesh and become man. That's very unique. But then if you go to Paul's writings in Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, Paul writes this, And he is the image, this is speaking of Jesus, the image of the invisible God. So God who is invisible, you can't see. Jesus is his image. He's, he's the one you can see. He's the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And so not only then is Jesus God, he is the image, he's the person we see, the invisible God. So he's the image of the invisible God. And he created all things according to Paul, which John tells us the word created all things. And then if you go back to the beginning in Genesis, it says God was the creator of all things. So now we start to put the pieces together and we see that Jesus, who came and put on flesh, is God in the flesh. Jesus himself, in John chapter 8, is talking to some religious leaders and Jesus himself lets them know that he existed um, way back, all the way in the beginning. In John chapter 8, specifically verse 58, Jesus tells them that he is the I Am. And the way he does that is he says to them, uh, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. That phrase, I am, is the same phrase that when Moses asked, if I go to the Pharaoh, who am I supposed to tell them sent me? And God said, you tell them, I am sent you. And so the reason we know that these religious leaders knew that that's what Jesus was talking about is it says in the very next verse that they picked up stones to stone him. And so Jesus himself concluded that he existed before Abraham was born. And that's the patriarchal father of the Jewish nation, Abraham. And so before he was ever born, Jesus says, I am, meaning I existed apart from nothing else. The same word that's used for God. So then if you go to Revelation, Revelation chapter 19, verse 13, you have this um, uh, reference to the word. But the word is referred to in this way. He is clothed, clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And this is describing the person of Jesus Christ. So real quick, I want to just, this Christmas, I want you to think through the uniqueness of Jesus. Because there are a lot of people out there that think that Jesus is really not that unique. And so when we come together at Christmas time and we say that we are worshiping uh, the Son of God who came through the Virgin, we are not just worshiping um, some kind of uh, made-up story. This is a story that is based on the truth of God's Word of a God, the God of all creation, who came down and decided to put himself into the womb of a young lady by the name of Mary, and then inside of that, he multiplied his cells, created a heart, created bones and cells and muscles and tissue, and then was born as a child. And then he lived as a young man and then grew and became a man and then gave his life as the God of all creation, gave his life as a substitute for your life and mine. So that if you and I, anyone who believes in him, that they could have eternal life in his death and his resurrection. Now that is a unique story, not only because of the scripture text and the way it tells us that Jesus is the God of all creation who put on flesh and became man and then died in our place, but here's what makes this story super unique. You can go back through history and you can find all these stories of all these other gods. 
And people can try to bring connections and comparisons that maybe they were born on the same day or the same time Jesus was, or maybe they had a virgin birth. And trust me, it's out there. People are trying to uh, help uh, or get other people to understand or believe that some of these other stories are similar to the Jesus story and that Jesus is not that unique. So you can go back there and you can look at all those other historical stories of all these other gods and all these other people. I mean, it's, we're talking Buddha, Zoroaster. They all have stories about that, possibly that, that they're just as unique as Jesus. But when you go back and look at all those stories, I can tell you right now, if I sit down and have a time to talk with you, we can debunk all of that because none of those things, most of those things that people try to report that are similar to Jesus' birth and who Jesus was are just not in the historical record. But we're, that's, that would be for a whole other day. But here's one of the things I want you to think about when it comes to the uniqueness of Jesus, and it's this. There is no God in history that came down to a sinful and wretched people. There is no history of a God who became flesh, dwelled among a wretched and sinful people, and then allowed those people to crucify him, and then took up his life again for this purpose, listen, for this purpose, that he might save those who trust in him. There is no story of a God like that. That is one of the reasons why Jesus is so unique and his story is so unique. So don't ever believe the myth that Jesus is not really that unique because the entire story from Genesis all the way to Revelation concerning Jesus is that he is the unique God of all creation who put on flesh and gave his life and then raised his life up again so that anyone who trusts in him can have eternal life. That's the Christmas story. That's the truth of a God who loves you. And I hope you remember that. So you have a great Christmas this year, and um, we'll see you next time.